Hello everyone and welcome to the annual ambassador's visit to the University of Utah Asia Campus. I'm your host Michael Park and today we've got some very special guests with us, our ambassadors from Ghana and Peru, Her Excellency Difi Aguiar Kokusi and His Excellency Daul Jesus Enrique Matute Mejia. It's a very big honor to have you here today. Could you please give us a quick introduction of yourselves? My name is Difi Aguiar Kokusi. I'm Ghana's ambassador to South Korea. I've been here for nearly one and a half years. I came in September 2017. I've loved living in Korea, and especially because at the beginning, I didn't really want to come. But once I came, I'm loving it. Great, yeah. thank you. My name is Saul Matuteme here, the short one. Mm. And uh, I'm very pleased to be here in this uh, uh, special place where five universities are working together internationally. And I love Korea. I think it's a beautiful country. And I'm working very hard, but with pleasure. Great. Thank you so much for being here today. Now, today we're going to be talking about something that has been a very a hot issue as of late. We're going to be talking about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or the UN SDGs for sure. Uh, so the SDGs are a set of 17 goals set by the United Nations, set to be accomplished by the year 2030 for the general improvement of people's lives all over the world. So what we're going to be doing is, we have this bowl here. We have all 17 of the SDGs in here. And you can pick one out at random, and whichever goal is on the piece of paper is the goal that we're going to be discussing. So, here, just a little shake here. Um, go first, madam. So it's goal number six, and it's clean water and sanitation. So, Madam Ambassador, how is this issue being dealt with in your own country? Well, clean water and sanitation is a big problem in my country. Uh, but this new government that started in 2017 is trying to do something about it. Mm -hmm. For sanitation, for example, there were a whole lot of homes in Ghana that didn't have any sanitation facilities. But now there's a law that has come into place and land owners and home owners are being forced to put sanitation facilities in their homes. Now, for water, especially in the north of the country, we have situations where people are drinking the same water as animals. And we have our government working very hard at that to make sure that there's clean water for everybody. Great. Thank you so much. And now, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. It's goal number one, and it's zero poverty. How do you think that our two nations can work together to end poverty on a global scale? Well, first of all, I wanted to present my country about poverty. Mm -hmm. As all the uh, countries who are in development way, you know, Peru also have his poverty, but uh, we have been uh, develop and increase uh, our economy in the last 20 years. If I'm going to say that in uh, 1999, we have 55% of uh, poverty. Today, after 20 years, we have only 19% because the economy of Peru is growing, it's in boom. We try to give the, the facilities of that. I was working in the United Nations at least 25 years ago. I was vice president of the second committee, who is in charge of poverty and many things. And also I was selected as one of the experts in finances for development. And in this regard, United Nations can do a lot for many people, you know. But you also need to see not only what's happening in one country, but you need to know exactly what is the geography of the country. And in my case, in the case of Peru, you know, we have different three regions. The coast, which is more developed, and is only 17% of the territory. The highlands, with 34%, which is very more difficult for giving everything, and the jungle, with 60% of the territory. You need to remember that Peru has 1,285,000 square kilometers. I mean, it's 13 times more bigger like Korea. But we do our best effort, and United Nations also have a very good approach. Thank you so much. Joining us next, we have our ambassadors from Sierra Leone and Ukraine, His Excellency Kathos Jabal Matai and His Excellency Alexander Horan. Now, we're going to be talking about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We're going to be talking about two very specific goals, the reduction of poverty and climate change. 
So the first one I want to direct to Mr. Ambassador. How do you think that climate change is being dealt with on a global scale and what steps do you think we need to take in order to move it further? It seems to me that at this moment the international community is trying to get to the point when the issue of a climate change will get adequate response. You are aware that some countries are not in a position to go ahead and continue to fulfill the goals which have been discussed, negotiated and adopted by the United Nations. But step by step, it seems to me, uh, more and more than that uh, without the resolution of this issue, we will have a lot of trouble. And first of all, climate change and uh, the latest, for example, facts about the pace of melting of the Arctic's Antarctic uh, ice shows that in a quite a short period of time, some of the world well-known cities will be underwater. This is the, the simplest example of the danger of the inactivity of international community if such a position will be taken. So it seems to me that today uh, the main mechanism in dealing with issue is to attract as much international support and solidarity as possible. Great, wonderful. Thank you so much. Now, Mr. Ambassador, what do you think that Sierra Leone and South Korea can do together in order to reduce poverty on a global scale? Poverty arises basically my, from my understanding is lack of basic resources for human living. For example, access to shelter, food, also security, because if you lack that, it's not only necessarily lack of money or income. In terms of uh, my country, which can be termed as underdeveloped, and looking at Korea, we can be classified, because we are all subscribed to the United Nations as a developed country, we also have to look at how can we share the riches. Korea is relatively high income economy, where Israel is on the lower scale. If you look at Sustainable Development Goals 17, which usually I try to look at, which calls for partnership, we need the rich Korean society and the poor Israeli society to form partnership so that we can help to stabilize humanity globally. Thank you so much. We're joined by our ambassadors from Belarus and Iraq, His Excellency Andrei Popkov and His Excellency Haider Shia Albarak. And we're still talking about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We're talking about two in particular. We're talking about climate change and the reduction of poverty. So, Mr. Ambassador, I want to direct this first one towards you. How do you think that we are working in a global scale to reduce poverty? To reduce poverty at national levels for each country and the global the whole, we need a global policies. And these global policies, the original source of this global laws is from the United Nations. Put in consideration the laws and the agreements of each country. So, to reduce poverty, is one of the major goals of the United Nations. And these goals should be imposed on each country by the United Nations to put it as an obligatory item in each country or the fifth plan of each country. Great, thank you so much. Now this next question for you, Mr. Ambassador. How is your country helping to reduce climate change on a global scale? Our country, the Belarus that I represent, is very engaged in all the international processes about prevention of climate change. Belarus participates in the basic international agreement in this field. And also we implement at the national level special strategies how to overcome these problem, problems, how to find the uh, solutions. But our efforts should be supported at the international level. As the Ambassador mentioned about poverty reduction, we need a very concentrated efforts from the global, I mean, United Nations organization system level and the national level. All the international programs that developed under the auspices of the United Nations should fully take into account. The national priorities should be very flexible in order to, take, to pay much attention to the specificities of every country, of every situation. In order to be effective, at the national level, at the global level, we need to mobilize a lot of resources, core and non-core resources, with assistance of donor countries and other stakeholders of this process, and allocate this resource as much as possible rational. Only in this case, we can achieve this very valuable goal. Great, thank together. you so much. 
and we're joined by our ambassadors from Honduras and Afghanistan, His Excellency Virgilio Paredes Trapero and His Excellency Abdul Hakim Atarud. Now, we're still talking about the UN SDGs, and we're talking about two in specific. We're going to be talking about climate change and the reduction of poverty. So this first one I want to direct towards you, Mr. Ambassador. What do you think that our two nations can do together in order to reduce poverty on a global scale? As you know, Honduras, it's a country that is in process of becoming a developing country. And Korea is a very developing country. So we're working to reduce inequality, to increase jobs. In Honduras, we're mainly concentrated trying to reduce poverty by investment. If we have investment in our country, then we can have jobs. And that's what our country right now needs, education and jobs. We're working on health issues as a part of the goals, the eight goals of the United Nations. But in relation to poverty, we're working to Korea strongly because poverty can be reduced by education. If we have Hondurans that are well educated, so we're sending a lot of Honduran students to be graduate in Korean schools and that with uh, through COICA, we're working strongly in that right now. And through investment, we're trying to bring investment from Korea companies or enterprises, you know, Kia, Hyundai, and other things, so they can invest in our country. If they invest in our country and through education, we can increase job opportunities in Honduras and that will bring to reduce the inequality. We're also working strongly with local governments. We strongly believe that economic growth can go by empowerment by local governments and municipalities. If we strong municipalities and we create conditions in the municipalities, that can spread around all the municipalities. So we have 298 municipalities and we're working right now with Korea through uh, empowerment, you know, like a brother-brother relationship with municipalities in Honduras, municipalities in Korea, so they can work together. So investment and education and other sectors of the different areas can go into Honduras and help us. And we're in the process. And right now, South Korea is one of the best allies we have in Honduras. Great. Thank you so much. Now, this next question I want to direct towards you, Mr. Ambassador. As you know, climate change is such an important issue in our world currently. And so what steps is your nation taking in order to improve on this global issue? As you know, Afghanistan is also a country that is being affected by the climate change. And recently, we had lots of people. Uh, more than uh, 4,000 people were displaced from their home countries. And also, there were around 150 people were died, and many people are still disappeared. For these purposes, and also for the challenge of pollution in Afghanistan, the National for Climate Change in Afghanistan has some plans uh, how to reduce the effects of this dilemma. For this purpose, we are in close contact with GCF, which is located in Korea, and they pledged that they would uh, annually uh, support Afghanistan about $1 million for capacity building programs. Also, in our national budget have some allocation of money, how we could face these challenges. And pollution or climate change uh, challenges somehow has connection with environment and also some another health issues. It is one of the most priority for us how to tackle with this dilemma and how to change for the best of our people and nation. Great. Thank you so much. That's all the time we have today, everyone. Another big thanks to all our ambassadors who came today to talk about some very, very important issues here at the University of Utah Asia campus. We hope to see you again very, very soon. Thank you.